think that this album for me, unlike the last album, say Hounds of Love, where I saw that as two sides, one side being conceptual, this album is very much like short stories for me. Ten short stories that are just saying something different in each one. And it was a bit like trying to paint the pictures accordingly. Each song has a different personality, and so they each need a little bit of something here, a little bit of that there. Just like people, you know, some people you can't walk up to because you know they're a bit edgy first thing in the morning, so you have to come up sideways to them, you know. And it's kind of like how the songs are too. They have their own little personalities, and if it doesn't want you to do it, it won't let you. I do think it's a very big self-therapy thing. Um, the more I work on an album, the more I think it's actually almost a process for me to try and heal myself, have a look at myself. I feel this is probably my most female album as well in that I've explored female energies in myself as a writer, producer, that before I've really just done what I've seen all the guys doing, because really everything I've learned in the music industry about making records has been for men. And it occurred to me more in hindsight than at, at the time that a lot of what I was doing was very male influenced. And um, I just wanted to try and find a female energy for myself. Not that there's anything negative about male energy in music because uh, it's great, you know. I just um, was looking for a, a female approach, I guess. I wanted to make the, the video for The Sensual World as simple as possible um, in that so many videos now are overloaded with effects, big sets, they look expensive. So what we wanted to do was just keep it in one set, one environment and depict what for me the song The Sensual World is about which is the sensuality of this planet, the weather, the elemental changes, being able to reach out and touch, the sound of the wind, all these wonderful things that we are surrounded by. Nature is very important to me as an inspiration. It's very important for me to be able to just look at intense pieces of landscape. And uh, throughout history, people have always gained inspiration from the sea, from mountains, from the sky. It's what we, th we sort of strive for, really, isn't it? You know, nature is perfect. God made the world in absolute perfection and anything that a human being does can never really be perfect. The discovery of music personally for me um, it came when one day my father took me into the piano and showed me the scale of C on the keyboard and I couldn't believe that this was how it worked, that it, it was so logical, that there was actually a plan to the keyboard that was so easy to see. It was like playing one finger on the notes and then singing that tune, and then gradually I got to understand about chords. 
Now once I hit chords, that was really it. You know, this was the most exciting thing in my life, a chord. My family are very musical, and uh, as long as I can remember, there was always music playing in the house. It surprises me even now when I look back at the amount of time that I was putting in, that, as you say, I was dedicated. And I would think it was extraordinary looking back on it now if it wasn't for the fact that at the time I just felt so strongly that this was what I had to do. It was like, it almost felt like a mission to me, that this was why I was here, this was what I had to do. I had to make an album and that was, that was it, you know. I didn't want to be famous, I didn't want to make lots of money, I didn't want to be successful, but I desperately wanted to make an album that I hoped people would like to hear. So all my energy was going into that. Even the dancing was tied in really with just trying to allow myself to grow a bit, to be able to express myself. And um, I also think if I hadn't put in those two years of dance training, um, I don't think I could have coped with anything after that point because the discipline and the humility that it taught me is something I think I'm still gaining a tremendous amount from. I actually left school and uh, I was training as a dancer. Uh, I kind of worked out a routine for my day, which would be I'd get up in the morning, I'd practice scales and that on the piano, I'd go off dancing, and then in the evening I'd come back and um, play the piano all night. And um, I actually remember well the summer of 76, uh, which was really hot here. We had such hot weather, I had all the windows open. And I just used to write until, you know, four in the morning. And um, I got a letter of complaint from a neighbour who was basically saying, shut up, because <laughs> they had to get up at like five in the morning and they did shift work. And I was, um, my voice has been carried the whole length of the street, I think, so they weren't too appreciative. Well, the video we made for Wuthering Heights was probably amongst the first ever made, certainly here in this country, in terms of a, a video. Um, and I was very influenced at that time still by Lindsay Kemp, so it was very much the dance influence that um, I was expressing. So uh, it was really um, working out uh, choreography that would just look interesting, that would kind of create a persona of Kathy. Well, I'm not actually a big Emily Bronte fan. A lot of people think I am, they presume I am. It goes with this whole preconception they have of me as uh, a sort of big Bronte fan, a Tolkien fan, the pre-Raphaelite lady, which I think is actually a very big misconception. Um, for me, Wuthering Heights is the ultimate love story. You just cannot get beyond the passion that they cover there, you know. It's a love affair that goes beyond death. They will not be stopped by nature's boundaries.
I've only actually toured once, 10 years ago, 79, and uh, we toured England and Europe. I've never done anything like that before. Um, I'm not a performer, I'm not someone who's grown up um, playing around clubs or pubs and then becomes a, a recording artist. I'm someone who from a young age wrote songs and then gradually learnt to sing and then gradually there I was in the studio and then it's all sort of an unfolding process for me. special and um, I guess really because of my influences from people like Lindsay Kemp we wanted to make it kind of theatrical and so it would incorporate lots of different things like uh, dance and we had a magician and uh, we had some poetry and just all different elements thrown together and um, it had a kind of a circus feel In terms of what we were doing then, it was very experimental. Um, I mean, apart from musicals or opera productions, it was kind of unheard of to uh, involve so many elements. What I needed was a microphone that I didn't have to hold because we wanted to do dance that involved two other dancers so I'd be lifted and we could run across the stage. And holding a microphone was very inhibiting. So the, uh, the sound guy that we had for the tour, I said to him, I want you to invent a microphone for me that I don't have to carry. So he basically invented the radio mics that you see now, but he made it out of a coat hanger. So he got an old coat hanger and kind of bent it into shape here and then had this piece that came around here that the microphone was then put on so it was just in front of the mouth. I still dream of all alone. I wake up crying. For me, what's important is writing songs. And it's just incredible how many things spin out of that. Um, you know, the lyrics, being a singer, and then really by making videos it becomes an extension again of the song. And uh, I suppose I've always been very interested in the visual side of things. I've always loved film. And um, it just seemed like a natural progression for me to get more and more involved in what I did musically and visually, because I made the first album and then I made the videos that went with it. So these are things that I've been doing for years now and each time I've done them I've become a bit more involved. I suppose my favourite ones are when it's a story though because then it is like making a little film. Cloudbusting's about Wilhelm Reich who was kind of remembered for um, work he did on organ energy and he had this thing called a cloud buster which was all tied in with organ energy but um, he could make it rain. When we were thinking about someone to play the part of the father um, we just sort of instantly came up with Donald Sutherland and everyone laughed because you know it's like <laughs> you know it's he's one of the greatest actors in the world, really, and um, we jokingly thought, yeah, you know, don't it be great? So we did actually approach his agent, who um, immediately said no, he couldn't because he's just too busy. But a friend of ours knew a friend of his who asked him, and um, he gave us three days of his time in between shooting two other films. And um, I still can't believe he did it. 
It was a wonderful thing for him to do, give us that time. Made it a very, very special thing for me. difficult making videos obviously you want to try and do something different everyone's making videos there's competition out there like probably nothing else Tim is kind of sitting throughout the song waiting for his girlfriend or whoever who's in hospital so most of the video is is very distressed you know he's in a real distressed state and um, he sort of looks up and the light goes away from the window and the spot comes down so he's just sitting in this spot and it's like he's suddenly conjuring up these memories and um, then I sort of step in with a raincoat and put it round his shoulders. When I'm directing them, I would I storyboard them and then get them drawn up professionally so that other people can understand. Because otherwise, it's like, oh, oh, what's that meant to be? You know, it's like meant to be me. You know, it looks like a blob. And also, just getting camera moves and that across on a professionally drawn storyboard, everyone can relate to it immediately. It's such a good way of getting people to understand what you really mean. That's cool. I don't think I ever wanted to become an actress. Acting is something that I've, I've never had um, a passion for or an ambition for. Uh, really, everything so far has stemmed from songwriting for me. One of my favorite people from the movies was Alfred Hitchcock, because for me, the guy was a genius. He was completely revolutionary. He was very witty, but witty in a very out there sense. And um, I still think people are learning about the film industry from him every time they watch one of his films. Beautiful. It's like the guy had a camera for a pair of eyes. to sit here and say I feel like I'm emanating Hitchcock but definitely he is a tremendous influence on me whenever I'm making a video um, you know he's really the ultimate reference point well, Love and Anger of all the songs on the album is really the one I know the least about I don't really know what it's about. It's had so many different faces and was one of the first songs to be written, but one of the last to be finished. And um, I think all the songs on this album are about relationships. Mind 
stupid at all. Politics are something that they're just not a part of me. I don't understand politics. I don't like what I see of politics. I don't see politics doing any good for people, really. It seems a very intellectual preoccupation, you know. If you want, it's kind of action, isn't it, you know, that does things for people. I think I'm an emotionally based person, and when political issues reach me emotionally, which of course is how most of us feel the hard end of them, um, that would then probably move me to write a song or something, but I, I would, wouldn't ever sort of write about politics. It's not, um, it's not a part of me. I suppose if I had to name the main things that are very, very good triggers for ideas, it would be books, films and conversation. And, um, you know, that just about covers it really for me. The odd walk in the park.